treat. All right, guys, new parts came in. I got a new intake valve. Um, I ended up buying new rocker arms because the old rocker arm, the side that that cam had eaten up, just looks super bad. And these weren't that expensive. I'm pretty sure I got them on eBay. So it's gonna have new rocker arms. It's gonna have a new intake valve. Um, I ordered a new cam chain because I'm gonna do that, but that has not come in yet. So we're gonna completely assemble the top end of this motor. And then when that cam chain comes in, I'll do another video on just how to replace cam chain on this. We have a new intake valve. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I wanna lap this new intake valve in just to make sure that it, it's gonna seat well. So I'm just gonna do that quick off camera. All right, so now we've got a nice gray band around there and we still have a nice gray band in here. That's pretty much it, I think. I think right now we're we're, uh, we're gonna be ready to put this back together. Um, I did get the new cam too. Brand new OEM cam, which is like 85 bucks, which is so much better than trying to find a used one for the same money. So we do have a new cam to put in this. All right, so first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put these valve seals on, take a fingertip of oil and just kind of put in it a little bit. I'm just gonna set it on top of it, stick my thumb on it. Usually they'll make a pretty distinct click. Don't try beating these on or anything. They're just a seal. Just push them on as far as they can go. So now I slide our valve up in, put our springs and our cap on. I'm gonna use the same tool that we used to take it apart. And we are gonna compress this spring so we can get the keepers back in it. And now that that's like that, I'm gonna very carefully try not to knock them out and try to loosen the spring pressure to try to capture those keepers. We got one valve done, now let's do it on this other side. So now we got both of those put in. Our valves are now put in and assembled. All right, so this is the, the pin that had the flathead on it because we need to worry about the orientation on this knock right here. So I'm gonna put a little bit of oil on this. All right, so that's all the way in. Now I'm gonna look through that hole right here and make sure that I can still get a bolt through that. Now let's take our other new rocker arm, stick that in sideways. Now this looks pretty symmetrical all the way around, so I don't see any orientation on this. See our rocker arms down in there. I'm gonna get them up out of the way. We're gonna take our new cam, put a little bit of oil on this. Put some oil in here. I'm assuming that needs to go in that groove there. All right, well that's in. The only other thing here really is uh, I see a hole there and I see a notch there. So there's a little pin right there. So the new cam did not come with a new little pin. I get to use my little pliers again. Okay. I guess it's probably gonna be easiest now to set the, set the valve flash well, it's on the bench. It looks like maybe there's a 10 millimeter and then an itty bitty little guy. It looks like two to four thou on the intake and four to six on the exhaust. Three goes, four doesn't. We're gonna go to the exhaust and kind of try to do the same thing. Four goes pretty easy, five goes, six doesn't go. Sweet. I think we are ready to put this back on the motor. Oh shit, I'm a dummy. I should not have put that cam sprocket on there yet. Oh well. I'm not a professional. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of eyeball it, kind of hold it up to the top, and it looks like this chain link right here looks like this gap is gonna be kind of towards the top if I kind of spread it out fairly evenly. So if I know that, then that means I know a tooth, the very top tooth needs to go in here on this flat. So see how I have this free play in here? What you can do is simulate the chain tensioner somehow. I don't know, I've got a used intake valve here. I'm just gonna slide it down this hole and push on that chain tensioner. And that's gonna take all the slop out of that chain just by pushing pressure in on it. So that should simulate what it looks like. And I'm pretty much lined up here. There's a, a little casting right here that needs to line up with this mark right here. All right, so I don't really know how this works, but I'm gonna kind of explain to you guys how I think it works. So we've got the actual pusher, and then there's your main spring, and then there's another little teeny tiny yellow spring in here, and then you can see right through that. And that's what that plastic cap does as it goes on top of there. 
and seals all this off. So if I take this and I squeeze it all the way down, you see how that right there is sticking out? So if I were to put that in there so that little tit right there was flush, then I know it has at least that much play for the chain before it actually bottoms out. But I'm not really compressing that yellow spring in there. I don't know if you can see that or not. That yellow spring takes a lot to move. So I think what I'm gonna do is thread this piece right here all the way in until that gets about flush maybe, somewhere in there, maybe a little shy of flush. And then I'm gonna tighten up this jam nut, screw the cap on, cause that'll give me lots of spring pressure. I don't know, that's how I'm gonna do it. If I find out uh, anything different, then I will let you know in the cam chain video. So as promised, that is just below flush right there. I have this jam knot tight and I'm going to uh, thread this cap on. I'm gonna probably snug this up a little bit. There's just an O-ring. There's an O-ring on the bottom of this knot that's supposed to seal off with the cylinder. And there's an O-ring on the bottom of this that's supposed to seal off against that knot since there's nothing there that's gonna keep it from uh, from leaking oil. Also, I don't, I don't remember if I said it or not, but I had all these uh, head bolts and stuff all torqued to spec before I did the tensioner. And uh, this website says uh, flange bolt 16 foot pounds. So I torqued these to 16 foot pounds and these here to 14. I actually just winged it on these. I got those two little bolts down there tight and I got the plug put back in. I'm gonna leave the recoil off for a minute. But uh, we are gonna put these uh, covers back on for the valve uh, inspection windows. And then I think we're gonna drain the oil cause this still has that nasty ass oil in it. And then while that's draining, I think we're gonna put the exhaust and the carburetor boot back on. All right, so I'm assuming this down here is gonna be super nasty. I'm assuming this is the drain plug on this because it's really big and it's kind of towards the bottom of the motor. Yuck. Well, the little screen doesn't really have like any big metal chunks or anything in it. So we're definitely gonna flush the oil on this once we get it running. We're gonna put fresh oil in it, run it, get a couple heat cycles in on this set of piston and rings, and then we're gonna dump the oil out of it and put, a, put more fresh oil in it. All right, we got her off the lift. Sweet. Um, I got the carburetor put on. Um, I was looking at this intake boot and it looks kind of like it's cracked a little bit down in there. We're gonna kind of test that once we get it fired up. But I purposely left this cap off because uh, I want to fill the oil through that. Uh, if you look at the case right here, it says 1500 cc's, so that's a quart and a half. So I'm probably gonna put a quart in the motor through this, and then we'll finish putting the other half a quart through here. But because everything in here is dry and if not, if it's not new, it's clean. So there's not any oil on anything in there. So what I wanna do is pour some and kind of get everything wet in here by flooding it with a quart of oil. It's all gonna go down anyways. So I'm gonna start from up there and then we'll put the last half a quart in there. And then uh, I'm gonna put that cap back on and we're gonna hook up an umbilical tank to the carburetor right here. So I didn't realize there was an oil filter on this. I'm assuming that's what's under here, but I had to pop the pin out of the brake lever on the foot brake <clears throat> to get it out of the way. But we're gonna attempt to take this off and see if there's an oil filter under it. That's nasty. <clears throat> yep, I'm gonna try to clean that out maybe clean this in parts washer and kind of scoop some of that out so it's fresher but the only way to get this out is to run it so we're just going to kind of clean it up the best we can and then run it and then hopefully it kind of clears up after this next oil change i know i just put oil on this which is kind of ass backwards but i'm hoping if i waste a little oil it'll kind of help it this poor wheeler so we're gonna put that back together and then we're gonna put fuel to this and let's hear it run. Mm. 
No way, really? I never did check the air box. This thing's like saturated motor oil. So we got it to fire up, but it acts like it's laboring super hard. Like it'll sit there and kind of idle half rear endedly. I've got the idle screw cranked way in on it. So what I'm thinking worst case scenario is, is that all the moisture in the bottom end has kind of seized up a bearing. So it needs to labor a lot harder to rotate than it would normally. But when I had the top end off of it, the rod felt good and the crank spun around normal, but maybe at a higher RPM, it doesn't like it. I'm not really sure. So I think there's a couple things I want to try before I assume that. One, I want to go back through the carburetor because it kind of acts like it's running kind of rich because it doesn't want to rev up. It acts like it's either getting too much fuel or it's not getting enough air. So I want to go back through the carburetor. One, while I have that off, I'm going to rip the air box out and make sure the air box is good and clean. I did take the air filter out of it and try it. And I also took the boot off right there to try to see if that would make it draw unrestricted air. And that didn't really help. And another thing I want to do is I want to put the timing chain in it. The new one that I ordered, I didn't have it when I wanted to finish up this top end and it did look kind of stretched. So it's possible that it being that stretched, the timing could be retarded a little bit. Another thing I was thinking too, which I forgot to mention was that I wanted to check the needle on this, on this, the slide because I had a blaster one time that the little washer was, the little clip was missing on the slide. And at higher RPMs, it would just, the needle would just float up, not the slide, and it would run super rich. That feels good though. The clip's in the middle, so seems like a good place to start. So that doesn't seem off at all. All right, let's keep tearing this apart. All right, so while I'm in there, it looks like number 15 is the main jet, but also there's a number 30 here, and I have no idea what number 30 is because this doesn't have anything else other than the main jet. So if I look up 15, it should give me the factory size. Right here it says 115, standard for wet type element. Don't know, this is a 112 and a half, so if anything, this is jetted a little bit leaner, which doesn't really seem to be what's happening. And then number 30 that I don't have is this main jet washer. So I don't really know what it'll do if it doesn't have that. But I think we're gonna pull this back apart and recheck this O-ring, make sure that kind of looks all right. Cause other than that, that might suck fuel in if it's not in there right. Make it run really rich when that needle starts to open. Maybe what I'll do is I'll take a little bit of scotch braid in there and try to polish that surface for the O-ring. Probably gonna get crap in the curb, but I seem to polish it up a little better. I'm not sold on that being the issue, but I'm gonna kind of spray this out with carburetor cleaner quick. I almost think I had the wrong O-ring in there. That one fits much better. I don't have any way to test it though. All right, well, I like that O-ring better, so we're gonna run with that. And I still don't know about that fuel, the main jet baffle. So we're gonna run without that for right now. I wanna try it, cause that kind of seemed like kind of a smoke and gun type of scenario maybe. <laughs> So I was being a little rough with it. I was revving it up pretty good. I don't know if I'm just expecting it to rev up like a race wheeler or race bike or something, but I don't know. I think it's pretty decent actually. It's not supposed to be a super fast revving high performance machine. So I actually think that's right. I think I had the too big of an O-ring in on the emulsion tube and uh, I think it wasn't sealing off very good. I ended up putting the factory emulsion tube and that little needle spacer doodad thing. Ended up putting the original one back in just because I thought maybe the lengths were different. So it was causing it to bottom out too far in, which was causing the O-ring to squish out an excessive amount. But 
Just come to find out the O-ring was wrong. I did notice though that this aftermarket one, the undercut up here above the thread is bigger in diameter than the OEM one. So take that for what it's worth. Never throw out your old jets when you put a carburetor kit in just because. I'm happy enough with that, that I think I want to clean the tank before I do anything else and put it on it and try to take it for, take it for a ride, I guess. I don't see anything holding me back. And then I'm gonna go dump this in my waste oil. All right, so because the tank's gonna go on, I wanna button up some of the gas lines and choke cable and breather vent hoses and stuff, so. All right, we're not gonna put a ton of gas in it just because I'm gonna have to order a new pet cock. I'm gonna put enough in it to go ride it. I think just for tonight, this is gonna be our gas shut off. This little clampy guy, just cause I don't trust it.